Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Grim Fix Podcast. We are excited to be here once again. <clears throat> I am one of your hosts, David. David D. 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 You gotta give me a nickname, right? It's like David's when I like Matt Corny, right? Yeah, David. Yeah, just use D. So I D. have here, I got JR and I got Charles. <laughs> <laughs> we are we are the Fix podcast. We are here with our coffee cups. Uh, cold weather has hit us. Yo, Tell we gotta us. get our own coffee cups with the Grim Fix. Uh, oh, that's coming, man! I I that's did a... these last year and some shirts and I did. This. Oh, that's awesome! Nice. So I gotta do the, the ones that Grim we Fix. have. They gotta be in black with the with the nice logo with the so Grim nice. Fix logo. <laughs> That is That'd cool. be awesome. So uh we are here. Uh cold weather has hit us. Uh JR oh, no. now is in the state of New York. Hello Estes. Hello United Estes. So JR now is officially in the north, 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 far north. Oh, um almost in Canada. Time has changed for us, so uh we gotta get used to this whole time change with Charles that is still in PR and he is yes. one hour ahead of us. Yes, I so, am. <clears throat> all right. So um, any interesting stories you want to share? Yes, I actually do. Go ahead. I was checking the comments and the videos that we had. And then I found this comment uh, from somebody that did the, on the... Uh, Jumbies video. Okay, and that's this, like episode and, two. Yes, and this person, the username is Wentico ENT. Okay. He he mentioned the rolling calf. And rolling like, calf. Okay. Rolling calf, yeah. And I'm like, what? Wait, uh, I'm going to have to Google this. And actually, I did. <laughs> rolling <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's, it's not a calf just holding their stomach, just laughing their ass off? <laughs> no, 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 no. At the, <laughs> you can like... <laughs> <laughs> you rolling, kill me rolling calf yeah google it I got, okay. I, go, I, got, I got damn I don't have nothing with me today I'm like oh my god just reading well, it, it on the positive side now you have a quicker faster internet connection oh yes meaning that while you have this open you can minimize it to yep. the side and you can do your research yeah. and it right. won't freeze <clears throat> So, uh-huh, rolling calf. So it says that um, the rolling calf is one of the worst and most feared du- duppies, doopies? Never heard of it. <laughs> du- D-U-P- D-U-P-E-E? D-U-P-P-Y. D-U-P-P-Y. Duppy, duppy, well, how do you pronounce duppy, that shit? I think duppy. Yeah. So a duppy, a duppy is a type of ghost or spirit native to Jamaica. So para que tengan context of what a, a duppy is. Okay. So it says that the rolling thing in this context means roaming, as in rolling through town. It is a shapeshifter that can appear in a number of guises. Oh, this is from um, a book of creatures.com. Okay. <laughs> and it says the best known is that of a hornless goat, black or white or spotted with a corresponding caprine stench. Uh, one of its front legs is human, the other is that of a horse, and the two hind legs are those of a goat. Its tail curls over its back, its eyes are red and glow like blazing fires. Flames come from its nostrils. There is a collar on its neck with a chain that drags on the ground and rattles ominously. The rolling calf can also appear as a cat, dog, pig, goat, bull, or horse, with a brindle cat from being particularly dangerous. It can be as small as a cat or as big as a bull. Y te dicen de dónde es que sale el origen de eso. Dice que, um, where is it? It says a rolling calf is the soul of a particularly wicked person. Butchers and murderers return as rolling calves or 
do over men. I, I don't know that word over. The latter can also set <laughs> rolling calves on people. Rolling calves are found in bamboo and cottonwood, as well as caves and abandoned houses coming out on moonless nights in search of sugar. And, and the way that you stop them, is, remember yeah. que tu las cosas en el piso and they had to count it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah. they all have that. Common, what you like, put? Hey? <laughs> a, 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 <laughs> they have, what, what do they do? Have, uh, como es? OCD. Uh, OCD. 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 Yeah. ADD or HDAD? That's or? interesting, though. So basically, the rolling calf is a reincarnation of evil people? Yep. Well, basically, that's what it is. All the jumpies. But I'm just trying to picture it. So the front legs, one is of a horse, one is of human. And the two hind legs are goat legs. There's a picture. That's what I'm looking for. I, I, look for that. There's, I put they have pictures. And there's a picture, which is actually, damn, if I could only show it. Well, you it's kind of weird. People who are watching on our YouTube channel will be able to see it. It's kind of yeah, that looks weird. weird with the so it has you fire. Can see that's flames, like fire yeah. coming out of the eyes and nose. And then the human leg, the mm-hmm. horse leg, and the two goat legs. That's so weird. Rolling calf. Where do they come up with this shit? I don't know, man. It's like that's what I'm How saying. do they come like, up with we, this? When we like even in PR. I mean, most of these Caribbean places, right? I mean, I guess all I guess all around the world, they have like these mythical creatures, if you want to call it that. And everybody claims to have seen it. Everybody, you know, not everybody, but people. It's most. like it's like aliens, like yeah. certain parts of the world. They claim I, to I see, even though I believe in aliens, we got to do a show about aliens. Of course, hell yeah. <laughs> because I don't believe we're the only ones in the universe. So, <laughs> Charles, do you believe in aliens? I don't know, man. It's really hard to tell. You know, <laughs> come it's, on, it's, 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 think it's about it. Es como ahora mismo, we don't even know what's en, en, en el agua, like, you know. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. That's, that's totally another story. That's that's a whole new podcast right the there. Cra- the Kraken exists. Well, yeah. <laughs> Not well, the yeah, way they do it in Clash of the Titan, but. Yeah, like in the <laughs> ocean, uh, I'm so, me and my wife talk about that. And, and we're always saying, like, every time they discover something new, it's like, holy shit, like. We haven't even, like, there's so much of the ocean we haven't discovered. What is it? Isn't it like yes. 70% water, the world, some shit? Or is it humans? Yeah. I think it's humans. I think it's oh, dude. Remember, <laughs> remember the movie we were watching? No, 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 no. Where it had a pond in under uh, underwater, like it was a little sort of a pond or like at the bottom of the ocean. Okay, yeah, the documentary. Yeah, okay. remember yes. we were watching that? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's like, wow. yeah, and you saw like how they show you. I know that there's like creature. Yo, we totally steered off. Uh, yeah, let's topic go here. back. That's like I said. But no, like I, totally... <laughs> the randomness is what makes it cool. But oh, yeah, like in, underwater, I know there's certain uh, species of, of fish, if you want to call it, mm-hmm. that they can only survive in the deep, deep, deep depths. So I guess right. the pressure of the water is what keeps them together. So if you would bring them up, they would disintegrate. That's disintegrate, crazy. Just inflate and break, you know, pop. So, yeah, there was a document. I don't remember the name of it. We were watching it last. It was on Netflix. Wasn't it Earth or some shit like that? The Blue One Earth? of those. I know that. Yeah, like it was crazy. They They went down like deep into the ocean. And then within the ocean... There's a certain part that looks like like a pond. It's like water within water. It's a, and this is real. This is not like a, a special effects. This is like the a real documentary. documentary yo. I was like, awesome. holy shit. And then you see there's certain creatures and fishes that only live under there. Like, I mean, call it evolution or whatever it is. Like the deeper it gets in the ocean, the darker it gets. You know, these fishes have evolved to have, you know, lights and neon and all that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, know, it's insane. That's why, I mean, when we think about that, and that's the ocean, something that we can actually see. 
I have to believe in aliens, man. There has oh, to be. I, I do. I believe in it. Why are you laughing? <laughs> you don't believe it? No, I'm skeptic. It's like like when the whole chupacabra thing was going on. Like I, I remember I, that shit. I wholeheartedly believed. I still believe that. I something. don't believe in that. I really don't. That's one thing that I don't. It's hard for me to believe. Well, my thing is, this is before the internet, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's easy to find a story and be like, hey, this happened to me and somebody reads it across the world. And even if it didn't happen, they can make it up and be like, oh, yeah, look, oh, this happened to me, too. But this is pre-internet. And if it was happening, which I didn't know, I found this out later, that it was happening like in Mexico and other countries. And then you have it happening in PR. I mean, it can't be a coincidence. Well, yeah, but I don't know. It's just like the animals that they were finding. You know, draining. You, know how, you know how shit are. People tend to create stuff and it just spreads <laughs> like wildfire. True. But I don't know, man. When I saw the legends, when I saw exactly. animals that they were, you know, you know, back then, not now, but back then, the news in PR, they were more uh, raw. They would show you like the dead people and all that stuff. And I remember yeah. they showed like animals with their blood drained. Yeah, that that that's true. So but still, up. I don't know. It's just I don't know, man. I'm skeptic on that. But if there's aliens, <laughs> look at Predator. They have dogs, weird dogs. Yeah. You know? But so, that's why like so when it comes to these urban let I don't even know what to call it. Is it urban legends or what it is like the rolling calf? And we spoke about the jumbies, even though. Um, I would like to bring somebody as a guest. Oh, yeah. One of these people that awesome. like 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 a Santero, right? In the sense of a lot of these people, like people that have studied this religion, like we all know some of it. But somebody who's truly studied it, they will tell you like these. I mean, just like Christians talk about the Bible and all that. And and they'll talk about how evolution of saints turn into one thing. And 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 like, for example, um, in some Hispanic countries, right? I want to put it that way. Uh, they worship the Virgin Santa Barbara, right? Mm -hmm. And in some of these religions, they believe that Santa Barbara eventually evolved into a different type of saint, which is what the Santeros worship uh, Chango, right? Mm -hmm. So Santa Barbara was a woman. Chango was a black man, like an African man with an axe. Right. When you look at religion, one represents good. The other one represents evil. When you look at the religion of Santeria, both of them represent the same thing. They both deserve to be worshipped. And then um, they're just worshipped differently. But it's basically the same person. Like there's another example. You look in Puerto Rico and you look at hospitals like. Uh, there's a town called Moca, right? And in that town, there's a hospital called uh, Hospital de Carlos Borromeo, right? When you look at the pictures in the hospital, you see he's like a pope because they have pictures of him in the hospital. And again, to the Catholic religion, this is a, a saint, right? Just like what the pope represents to them, a saint, a person who lived, did good and whatnot. This same saint... When you look at it in the religion of Santeria, eventually, I, I call it evolution. Obviously, they don't call it that, but this saint evolved into another of their deities called Candelo. One represents good, the saint. Candelo was a man who, who he was a drunk and he had to do with fire. So those who worship him and they do these like rituals, they'll do rituals with fire. But when you look at the history, it's the same person. 
I always say it's like Pokemon, right? It starts one way and then it falls. <laughs> but but these, this is what these people truly believe. And you hear stories, the things that they they say that they've seen. And you'll go to other parts of the world and you hear people maybe in the same religion or different beliefs, but that will claim they've seen the same thing. Yeah, These but they'll change it. So that's what I'm saying. So somewhere along the line, the story starts one way. It's like, what, what is it that they call it? Uh, intertwine? Uh, no. So there's a game with kids. What is it called? Telephone. 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 Telephone, right? So you see how telephone, you start with one thing and it goes to the next person. Oh, to yeah. Next, That's to that next great person. mind thing. And when you come to hear the person that originally said it, it's something probably totally different. So I believe, right, this is me. I know dick about this. I'm just <laughs> giving you New what York I believe. About it. I believe somewhere along the line, somebody said, I saw this or that. Like, let's use the rolling calf, right? Somewhere, someone saw something. And obviously, fear is something that impairs your judgment. Like when, like when we were afraid and we freeze, right? Mm -hmm. And our mind is going, you know, like a thousand miles an hour. It's just trying to process everything that you're looking at. By the time you get out of there, you probably saw a calf. But the fear made you see like, yo, I saw that shit with red eyes. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then yeah, I, I, I tell JR, that. and then JR says like, oh shit, David saw this calf. Yo, it had red eyes and it was breathing fire. Charles goes to the next person and he's like, yo, I don't know, but that shit was like 10 feet tall. And that's how it keeps evolving, right? Yeah, and there's always one a-hole that ends up drawing the whole thing the way they said it. Yeah, because it's, you know, whatever. There you whatever. go, the rolling calf. It's not the same thing for me to say, go back to the origin of the story. Well, he saw a calf eating hay. Mm-hmm. Than to say, holy shit, this person was there. It was dark. There was a 10 foot creature, red eyes. That shit had a human leg. It had goat legs in the back. It, you know, it sounds more like, oh shit. See, this is an example. This podcast, you think we'd be talking about it if it wasn't so sensationalized and so creepy? <laughs> <laughs> no, but yo, we got to thank that, that, that viewer or listener for that comment. I mean, in reality, people truly believe this. And I mean, we can't say it's not true because we don't know. So just in case I'm clarifying, right, for the listeners and viewers, we're not saying it's not true because we don't know. Like I can tell you personal stories. I'm pretty sure we all have one or two stories that we can share of things we believe we saw. Mm-hmm. We don't Was know it? shit. Yeah. We yeah, you know shit. Gonna, we, we just talk shit. Words, we don't know shit. We talk shit. <laughs> in big words, put it blinky. We're not professionals. Bro. Yeah, we we know nothing. We're three we idiots. Just we are big dicks. <laughs> <laughs> We're just shooting the shit here, and but I'm saying like it, it's. I mean, I I find this super interesting when I no, hear these course, stories. It is interesting. I so, would have never known if they wouldn't have mentioned. I would have never heard about. Yeah. That. Yeah. Look at that. See? And that wasn't in the website that we we uh no. we researched. that was on the YouTube no, comments. No. That was exactly wow, that's comments. awesome. I really gotta thank that whoever it was, I really gotta thank them for coming up with something like that. We never found on, on that Jumbie website. And this is why we tell you guys, if you are watching us on YouTube, to leave your comments. If there's something that we don't talk about that you might know, shoot it because it'll it'll put us to work. We'll start researching it. We'll look mm-hmm. for it and we'll discuss it. I mean, that's what this is about, right? So um, I know we went already on our topics and went on a tangent, but I just wanted to remind everybody, if you are listening to us on your favorite podcast platform, please follow, subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review, drop us five stars, tell the world how great we are, how amazing we are. If you are watching us on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. Give us the like, right? It helps with the algorithm and whatnot. Uh, mm-hmm. Activate that. What is a notification bell? So every time a new episode comes out, 
you will get notified quickly. And um, <laughs> yeah, drop us your comments. Search for us. Listen on on social media. We're right now. We're on Facebook and Instagram. You can find us as uh, the Grim Fix Podcast. And I mean, I already said that, but in the podcast, you can find us on Spotify, on iHeart Music, on Google Play, on Anchor, on uh, there's another one I can't remember right now, but Apple. yes, on Apple Podcasts. If you have a story, listen, a story, it could be a paranormal story. It could be a scary story. It could be an encounter with a serial killer. I don't know. Well, whoever it is. Story. Yeah. A you UFO. You got probed by the aliens. We want to hear about it. The Grim Just Fix Podcast how it felt. at Gmail. Yeah. <laughs> Give us details, right? So. Just like Carmen when that antenna pops out. There you go. Exactly. If you have Damn, that happening that. to you, we're the podcast for you to tell us. Yeah, man. We want to talk about all that nonsense. All right. So um, before we jump into, because... See now, I mean, you know what? You know what? Yeah, let's just jump into that because it, it just ties in perfect with all these uh, stories and the rolling cab and whatnot. And so, something that I found, I never heard of this before, and all of a sudden, I I stumbled onto. I don't remember how I stumbled onto this story, and then I just started searching, and I found that there's stories all around the world and there's even a website dedicated for people to write their stories on with this uh i don't know if we want to call it a, a being or paranormal being um so it's called the hat man i again i've never heard of this before no and yeah. um i so i'm I, I searched it up and I started searching different pages and I went to uh, paranormalcatalog.net, which we read the jumbies off and they also had something on it. So I just want to read you quickly here uh, what it says. It says that around the world, thousands of people have reported seeing an entity known as the hat man while falling asleep. Is the hat man a shared hallucination? Or some kind of spiritual entity. So when I think about the hat man, I think about, I think we've all had that moment where you're probably sleeping, falling asleep. You're in a dark room and you look towards the corner and you see something. And if you're a brick shitter, you're going to get scared. Or if you're curious, you're going to turn on the light. Usually, if you turn the light, hey, oh, look, it's a coat rack or, I don't know, it was a towel placed on the door. And everything in the dark, again, our eyes play tricks on us. And if we feel fear, it amplifies that. Mm -hmm. All right. So it says here, encounters with the hat man. Many people around the world have similar stories about encountering the hat man. A typical story involves a person suddenly waking up in the middle of the night as they peer out into the darkness, they see a figure in their doorway. See? It's creepy as fuck. The, the entity... <laughs> Yo, it don't a, have to be a hat, man. It can be anything. <laughs> and you still be shitting bricks. Hell yeah. So it says that... It's like the worst thing. Yeah, no. So, yo, when you're afraid, you see, again, it could be a towel. It could just be a shadow. It could be anything. And you're going to see it so much scarier than what it I really think, is. I think that cada uno de nosotros have been through that at least exactly. once. Exactly. Yeah, I'm pretty sure once. we all have had that happen to us. I think everybody has had it happen. That feeling. So did you the next day say, oh, shit, so I saw this. And again, the whole telephone syndrome where, you know, I saw it this way. And then that person's like, oh, shit, Charles saw this. And it had this and this and this and this. And anyway, so it says the entity is a dark silhouette of a person wearing a wide brim hat. The person is unable to move or scream for help. That's the fucking worst when you have that in your dream. Oof. Says so sometimes seeing the hat man is accompanied with an extreme feeling of fear or impending doom. Eventually, the hat man fades away into nothing and the person is able to move again. 
thousands of people around the world have reported seeing the hat man watching them in the night. Timothy M. Timothy M. Brown Jr. has dedicated himself to documenting encounters with the hat man on his blog. Oh, the hat man project. That's the site that I found. I didn't know that they spoke about that here, but okay. The hat man project has hundreds of stories of people's encounters with the hat man. They range from terrifying encounters to stories where the hat man seems to be trying to protect the person in recent times. People have been sharing their encounters with the hat man on TikTok. I'm going to see if I get, I got like two videos here from the hat man stories on, on TikTok. Mm-hmm. We will share with the viewers and I mean, listeners will be able to hear it, but the viewers will be able to view it. Enjoy it more. The hat man feeds off of children's emotions. That's why specifically children see him frequently. And for those that aren't familiar, this is the hat man. The hat man is a type of shadow person, but not all shadow people are hat man. And not all shadow people are evil. But I believe, and a lot of people believe with me, that the hat man is evil. Let me explain why. So like I said, the hat man often appears to children. Children are notoriously not good at emotional regulation. The hat man feeds off of strong emotions. While not always negative emotions, it is oftentimes negative emotions. The hat man also appears to victims of trauma who are also having issues with emotional regulation. My and other people's hypothesis is that the hat man are feeding off of these strong emotions, much like a parasite. And he doesn't always appear threatening because he doesn't want to scare off the host, us. So that's why you'll see some people say that, oh, he's just a watcher or he protects because he'll lure people into a false sense of security to keep feeding on them. But what do you think? Here's where it gets crazy. If you Google the hat man and you look at the images, you'll see a bunch of different variations of what the hat man might look like. But almost like a police lineup to every person who's ever actually experienced this, myself included, we can immediately point to this image of the exact shadow that we saw. This image, detail by detail, proportion by proportion, is the exact same shadow that I saw every night I spent in that room from age 15 to 18. Leaving me to wonder, what is the hat man and why do people see him? Many people into paranormal things write off shadow figures as a demonic presence. Scientists write off shadow figures as hallucinations during sleep paralysis. And Ancient Aliens even released an episode recently about shadow people alluding to an extraterrestrial origin. I guess I could see where people are coming from on that because the top hat is somewhat similar to what you'd imagine the men in black wear. However, I recently came up with my own theory that maybe there's an interdimensional element to this. What if electrical signals and artificial light weaken whatever link exists between our dimension and whatever dimension this thing is from? And what if the classic top hat and trench coat is actually just some form of technology in that dimension that allows them to access this dimension? It's just a hypothesis, but it's one that I brought up to James Keenan, who's a researcher from Skinwalker Ranch. I was interviewing him last year and I told him my theory on the interdimensional element to shadow figures based on my experience because shadow figures are a common occurrence at Skinwalker Ranch. And he told me he thinks shadow people are jinn, which is an invisible spirit often referenced in the Islamic religion. What's even more ironic is my my family moved out of that house in 2012. And in the 10 years since we've lived there, that house has been sold twice. Maybe it's just a coincidence, or maybe there's a logical explanation to that too. Have you ever seen the hat man? If not, maybe think twice when turning out the lights tonight. So um, in that blog, right, the hat man project, there's a couple of stories here. There's actually a few of them recently. Wow, there's a bunch of them here from... Halloween day. Would you guys like to hear some? Oh, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. So we have the first story here. It's uh, by anonymous because it does not have a person. It says this person, it doesn't say from where. Let me see. Because I know there's some from like China. and Okay. It doesn't say from where. China be having the scariest shit. Yeah. China be... I don't fuck around Maybe with that. Maybe coming up with these videos, they could be yo made up or whatnot, but they created like I gotta yo I gotta pat them on the back. Okay, so this one is called "The Hat Man Appeared in My Room." It says this was posted on Halloween Day, twenty twenty two. Three years ago, I was asleep, and something woke me up. I saw a figure of a very tall man, about two meters. That's what, six feet, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Give and take. Mm-hmm. Very thin, with a cape or a suit and a large hat. He was bent over looking at me. Yo, I would fucking flip. <laughs> <laughs> With that alone, shit. Yo. You get that breathing and shit next to your ear. Very light. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yo. <laughs> so he was bent over looking at me, and I could feel how, his, how evil he was. I rolled the other way quickly and turned on the light, and there was nothing there. It was not a dream. Something woke me up and I saw it very clearly. He was leaning over and looking at me and he didn't say anything or hear any noise. I sleep with the blind up and the street lamp dimly illuminates the room. So everything is perfectly distinguishable. I quickly turned on the light, but there was nothing there. I was so scared about this thing that I slept with the light on that night. Three days later, my little daughter was sleeping with me, and the same thing happened. I woke up and saw this tall man, all black with no face, and a wide brim hat, leaning over and looking intently at my daughter. Yo. It didn't have a face that I could see, but I was terrified it was going to take her away. When I realized I was watching it, when it realized I was watching it, suddenly it disappeared. A few months ago, by chance, I heard a story similar to what I lived through. I searched on the internet and I saw that many other people around the world have had similar experience, so I came to this site. I mean, I never had slept sleep paralysis before or had anything paranormal happen before this encounter. I did not even know that the Hatman existed. But I know it is real now. I don't know what its meaning is or why it came, but I'm scared for my daughter. Uh, it's crazy. Got you. No, just imagine, yo, just imagine you looking over, you see that guy or whatever it is, that entity, whatever you want to call it, looking down, bent over, looking down at your daughter. When you look at it and you spot it, it just turns its face towards you like suddenly. Yo, Ooh. nah, man. It's just one thing is to say, like, oh, I looked in the corner and I saw like a silhouette. Yo, but if you're saying I saw this person, this man or whatever it is, just bent over looking at me, yo, I would shit my fucking pants. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> All right, let's see. Yo, lo más que, lo más que me they haven't made a movie about this yet. I know well, some like, surprises I've never me. Heard you never about know this before. <laughs> All right, so there's another one called Hotel Hatman. My kids and I both saw the Hatman, and there's another one called The Hatman came from my mother in China. Which one do you want? <laughs> the China one. <laughs> <laughs> that one sounds like funny. <laughs> the ca- yeah, it came from what? What from my mother? Came from her mother. The Hatman came for my mother in China. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So I guess they don't write. They don't write the person who wrote it. They just put it, and that's it. Let me see. Anything else here? No. See, that's yeah. why. It's, sometimes that's why you gotta be skeptical. People coming okay. up with these weird stories, <laughs> but they're enjoyable. All right. So it says here. Entertaining. I, yeah. Yes. I have only seen it once, but we have no name for it. I'm from China. We have a rich culture of the unknown, but this is something different. Something said that it might be a hallucination. Oh, wait. Someone said that it might be a hallucination or imagination after watching horror movies like Nightmare on Elm Street or something else. But it was very real and solid. So I don't think that that's what it was. It happened when I was six or seven years old. I remember that night, the moon was so bright that I could see things clearly when light turns off. I couldn't sleep that night, so I just lay there sleepless. The door in my room is facing the door of the bathroom, and between them is a long hallway. I remember that there was a tall man with a wide brim black hat and long black coat that came from the living room wall on the right side. At first, I didn't feel scared. So I looked straight at him, but he didn't seem to realize that I was awake. I couldn't see his face. He was like a silhouette. 
He stood in the bathroom in front of the mirror for a while, like he was looking for something, and walked straight to the left hallway towards my parents' bedroom. I thought I heard my mother whimper, but I'm not sure. I laid there quietly to see if it came back, but it didn't, and I went back to sleep. The next morning, I talked to my mother about it, but she brushed me off like she didn't want to talk about it and just said that I was just dreaming. Now, I'm 20 and have never forgotten about this. A few days before I found this website, I talked to my mother once again about it. She finally admitted that actually, she had a nightmare that night. In her dream, there was a killer who was killing lots of people, but no one could catch him because they couldn't see his face. She felt he was looking for her. So she got up out of bed in her dream and hid behind her bedroom door. Suddenly, the killer found her and cut her neck with a machete and killed her. She said she then woke up from the nightmare with a cold neck and it was sore. It took a few days to go away. She was so scared about it that she didn't want to scare me more when I asked about it as a child, so she lied. But even after all these years, I always believe what I saw was not a ghost. It was the hat man. I looked straight at it for at least a minute or so. I cannot be wrong. I, I believe, well, I, I believe that, that she felt the sore neck. I did have a dream that way where someone cut my hand, like the palm of my hand, yeah. with a razor and when i woke up i still really felt the, like that pain and yet i would look at it and there was nothing but i felt like that's how strong the mind is but yeah it's it's crazy yo siempre sueño que me estoy meando those are always my dreams i gotta pee man and that makes me wake up in the middle of the night and yeah, and so yeah, many you people see that, that wet the bed. That's how that. That's how. That's how it happens. It was like, oh no, I was dreaming that I was peeing. And, and yeah, wake up with a big ass puddle. Jeez, oh the os. But you know what? That hat man just reminds me of take a guess. Freddy Krueger. Well, it's I, I. I wonder if he was like inspired by that. Because Freddy Krueger was inspired by that. Huh? If Freddy Krueger was inspired yeah, by that. Yeah, sort of like inspired by that. But hey, who knows? But well, who I'm talking about is this guy, um, Undertaker from WWE. Oh. Yeah. He has that hat with the long trench. Yeah. And the, yeah, and yeah. the stare. Wasn't right. there like a... Stare, uh, but uh, it has to be like a no face thing. Wasn't there like, I don't know, it was an action movie. It was a movie called Dark Man. Yeah, but he has like bandages around his face. Yeah, some shit like that. All he, right, he was the hero, I guess. All right, so let me see. We can. Re- oh, I want to read this one though. My kids and I both saw the Hat Man. Yeah, that one sounds interesting. All right, so let's read this one. All right. This podcast is recorded in, in, in front of a live studio. Of my level studio audience. audience. Yeah, because I have an audience here. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, I have, my wife and my, I have my wife and my son-in-law. <laughs> nice. All right. So uh, December 14, 2020. I saw the hat man and I will never forget it. My kids said they had been having nightmares about a tall man with a wide brim black hat. He had, see, you see, this is, this is how they keep adding to it. He had sharp claws and sharp teeth and would (laughs) chase them in their dreams. Freddy (laughs) Krueger. I ignored it thinking it was the imagination of young children. I was dead wrong. They started having the same nightmare and said they saw each other in their dream and even described it exactly the same when we separated them and asked them about it individually. That's interesting. Like, yeah, I, I'd be creeped out, right, that you have your kids. They're having nightmares. I mean, naturally, once your kids have nightmares, you still get like a little, you know, scared. Yeah, the jitters. But having 
two of your kids having the same dream, saying that they saw each other in the dream, and then you separate them and they both have the same story. Yeah. So we planned that out in the corner. Yo, let's scare the shit out of our parents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they were seven and four at the time, and they were both so scared telling us about it. I started wondering if they weren't actually, if they were actually seeing something. Shortly after this happened, I was asleep next to my husband and I woke up, or so I thought. I looked towards the door frame of my room and saw a shadow standing there. It was dark, so at first I thought it was my husband. But as I was about to ask what he was doing, I felt my husband next to me and in that moment I realized this was something else entirely. In that moment of realization, I was suddenly terrified and panicked. I started, I started kicking at the hat man to get him away from me as if it suddenly appeared to be getting closer. Just before my husband got me to wake up, this thing started to lean over me and I swear I saw him grin and bear these razor sharp teeth. It was exactly the way my kids had described it, wearing a black fedora hat and a long black trench coat. So Ain't this one f- had a fedora. That's not the same as a brim hat. Uh, no, exactly. Yeah, that's like the. This one was more stylish. Really no, fedora's the one that uh, I think we've all had one at, the, at some point. I have. I have two fedora hats. I'm gonna wear it to the next podcast. The <laughs> yeah, man. you pull yourself the the hat man. <laughs> so you um now you got your nickname yeah the hat man, the hat man. The hat man. <laughs> okay so uh for the okay when i woke up i was shaking my husband said i was whimpering and started crying in my sleep as my legs were kicking i had a severe cramp in my right leg which was the leg i thought i was kicking at the figure with i curled up in a ball under my blanket and slept like that for weeks I did not know what this was until years later when I heard someone on a podcast describe the hat man and chills ran down my spine. I looked it up and found this website and pictures of what people think they saw. When I saw these pictures and heard these encounters, it was like I knew this is what I also experienced and I didn't feel so alone. I have not seen him since, but I know my brain doesn't want to again. A fear lingers over me to this day about seeing him again. I even had my ex-roommate also put sigils of protection on both of my doors because of what happened. That was as good as that. Easy. <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> it was like Freddy Krueger, man. So the hat, man. I don't know. Um... The hat man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that last one was like, uh. I don't know, man. I, mean, I <laughs> you just lost the lost the words. I mean, I don't know what to make of it. It's just again, one thing is to say, uh, you see, like, like I, I mean, I know we we all have stories like that. Mm-hmm. You look to the doorway, you see a shadowy figure, and, and you know, again, uh, the fear amplifies it, so you see it scarier than what it really is. All of a sudden, you turn on the light, and you can say it disappeared, or you can say, like, hey, I see what it really was. It was the shadow of X, Y, Z. True, true. But when you're telling me I see something stand over me, that's a different story. Yeah, even though her okay. the last two stories we read, both of them were in quote yeah. unquote dreams. Mm-hmm. The first story we read, the person's you know actually feels that they saw it. Sure. Let's read even one though last those one. Two kids, a four year old, to come up with a story like that. It's, it's that yeah. Hard. So, I mean. One was seven, one was four, and, and exactly so if that really happened where they both, you know, were, were telling their dreams and they both had the same story. 
that four year old, yo, to come up with a story like that, it's got to be sort of, sort of real. I mean, ha- something, something. I, I don't know what it is, but something. So this one is in Switzerland. Let's read two more. I got two more I want to read. All right, let's read this one. This one is called The Victorian Hat Man. Hello, I'm 16 years old and I live in Switzerland. A couple of this was also posted. All of these were posted on Halloween. A couple of months ago, I was in bed and I was looking at my phone. It was almost midnight and I decided to go to sleep. I put out the light and was laying in my bed, ready to sleep. I closed my eyes and suddenly the image flashed in my mind. I saw writings similar to runes written in red on a wall like blood. I couldn't read them and I was completely scared. So I sat up in bed to wake up. I figured I was having a short nightmare. The next night when I was ready to sleep in the dark and I saw the face of a man briefly emerge from the shadows, then it quickly disappeared. I can't really describe it, but it was frightening and was very quick. I was really scared and talked to my mom, but she didn't completely believe me. The third night in a row, this was happening, I saw the hat man. It was almost midnight and I laid awake in bed, ready to sleep, but somehow unable to do so. I suddenly saw this dark gray silhouette of a tall, thin man with a short, dark hair and high top hat and an old time Victorian suit. He didn't move or speak. (laughs) See, that shit would creep me out. You don't move or speak. That's Blair Witch Project all over again. That's just (laughs) the man being in the corner. (laughs) Yeah. Um. Okay, so, okay, uh, he was just uh, okay. So, uh, turn to he didn't move or speak, he was just he wasn't moving, just looking at me. I was terrified and was wondering if it was really real. I was so scared, yet somehow I managed to tell him to leave, and he suddenly became angry. I saw it in his eyes. He reached out a hand, palm open to me with an angry look, and he touched me. Then he disappeared. I was terrified, wide awake, and I wanted to put on the light next to my bed, but my body couldn't move at all. I was completely paralyzed. I had to, yeah, I had to wait five minutes and then I put on the light and ran into my parents' bedroom crying and upset. It was a bit complicated for me because my parents wanted to help me, but they weren't completely convinced I wasn't imagining things. They didn't believe in this kind of spirit. So at the beginning, I was a bit alone with that. After that, my spiritual gifts really grew. And I learned how to protect myself. So now it is okay. Oh, wow. I still still regularly see spirits in my bedroom. And occasionally, I feel that some people talk to me or touch me, but don't remember who or why. Yes, was that? You guys heard that? Heard what? I'm not kidding. No, <laughs> something went. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You You're didn't bugging hear out. It? You're bugging I out. shit you not. I hope it was recorded. <laughs> I, I did. I did. You heard it? Yes, I did. Cause you got headphones on. Yeah, something went. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I gotta listen to that. <laughs> I hope it came out recorded in the podcast so everybody can hear it. We got one! <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. okay. Yesterday, a friend of mine told me that what I saw was the hat man. Do you know why he's bothering people? What does he want? Question mark. I don't know, man. Um, the person was awake. It's a different story right there. Yeah, they grew their powers. I didn't know they had powers. I didn't even know he had powers. Bruh, look at this dude. <laughs> That's what I found a little weird. Oh, my spiritual powers grew. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what no, does but that, the, mean? That, that That standing still, the standing still and the bending over you, it's like, that's what creeps out. You know? 
If it's oh, yeah. just standing there in a corner and just staring at you, doing nothing, it creeps the shit out, you know? And if it's bending over to your face and you open up your eyes and you see that shit up close. Yo, you just open your eyes and see some shit like this just staring at you like your motherfucker say something. Don't just stand there quietly. That shit is scary. Just stand there looking at me. And, <laughs> Start swinging. <laughs> like say something, man. But Yo. that's the thing. You're paralyzed. You can't swing. Yeah, it's yeah. just in shock, you know? The problem is what he's going to say, you know? You hear that creepy voice telling you, I want you. Get out. Get out. <laughs> All right. One last one. <laughs> this one is called Four Generations of the Hat Man Encounter. Okay. This one's a little longer. Okay. Yeah. I'm Rachel. I currently live in WV. What's WV? Some state. I feel. I don't know. <laughs> West bullshit. Uh, w V V V as in Victor. Uh, w V uh, West Virginia. West Virginia. <laughs> Virginia. All right, let's go with that one. All right. So I'm Rachel. I currently live in West Virginia, <laughs> and I would like to tell you briefly how the Hat Man has visited four generations of my family. I have seen the Hat Man three times in my life so far. I first began seeing him when I was around six or seven years old. My dad was a firefighter and would work 24 hour shifts. And then the nights he was gone, I would crawl into bed with my mom. One night I woke up because I felt like I was being watched. I rolled over and there was a very tall man wearing a wearing all black and what looked like a long trench coat and a wide brim hat similar to what Indiana Jones wears. Other than his whitish red eyes that glowed. See how they add stuff to it? Yeah, all they need to add is the teeth. <laughs> I couldn't make out any other physical features. He stood maybe about five feet away from the bed and stared at me. I couldn't speak and could hardly move. I was so terrified of this evil thing that all I could do was think to hide. I ended up covering my face with a blanket and sank behind my mother in bed terrified. My mother didn't seem to sense anything. She continued snoring and somehow I ended up falling back asleep. How? I, could pass, I couldn't possibly explain. Fast forward to my late teens. I was around 18 or 19. And like most typical teenagers, I yearned for more privacy. I had moved all of my things to the bedroom in the basement of our house. I was, it was not long after that that I started seeing him again. One night, I finished my homework and went to bed. As I pulled the covers up and got comfortable, I felt that same creepy sensation of being watched. I opened up my eyes, and there it was, standing in the doorway of my room, not far from my bed. I was terrified. I couldn't scream all I could. All I, wait, I couldn't scream. All I could was the same thing. I guess all I could do, there's typos here. Yeah, very. The same thing I did as a little child, and I covered my face. I have no idea how much time had passed. I stayed still for a long time. Eventually, I lifted the blanket back up, and he was gone. Yo, imagine you say it for a long time when you lift the blanket back up, he's still there. He's still there. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what are you doing? Yeah. What, are you, what the hell are you doing? You're going to ask the same question I was about to ask. Go ahead. <laughs> Why do people cover up thinking that yeah. the blanket is going to protect yeah. I always ask that. I was like, why do people do that? It's like, the co is, is it going to protect you? Like when people's like, oh, I covered my face and I just hid under the blanket. Was, OK, like if somebody was really there, think about that. Like, let's say it, it not supernaturally, like a real person was there to kill you and they have a knife or whatever. And you cover yourself with a blanket. Doesn't that make you a uh, easier target? Of course. <laughs> you just won't know. Maybe it's just that, that you you don't want to see it type or donde viene. You just go like, I don't know, if you're if you if you're gonna get stabbed, like you don't get over donde viene. Like, but it's like it's like 
it's like covering your feet. It could be hot as fuck, and you'll always cover your feet. You had that habit. I don't know if you still. I have still it. do. <laughs> I have to cover my feet. I could be hot. I'll be I, like I don't. I don't. I won't use a blanket, but I'll cover my feet. Why? I don't know. Why? They like they can't grab his feet. Yeah, Jesus. like if somebody was gonna grab my the 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 you know the blanket is gonna protect my feet. I have no idea. All right. Makes you an easier target. The last time I saw him was in college. I was around 20 or 21 years old, working and going to college, so I was tired. I decided to lie down and take a nap in my dorm room since my roommate was gone. It was a warm day and quiet, and I had almost drifted to sleep when I felt like there was something from the corner of the room watching me. I thought it was my roommate at first. Maybe she'd come in when I had dozed off and was being weird and trying to annoy me. I ignored the feeling for a few minutes until I couldn't stand it anymore and sat up to see what she was doing. It wasn't my roommate. It was the nightmarish hat man figure I'd seen when I was younger. It was the same tall, black, solid looking figure with the wide brim hat Except that for this time, it was during the daytime. Yo, my heart that's, was pounding. Yeah. <laughs> that's even worse. During the daytime, that's free. <laughs> my heart was pounding, but I wasn't as scared as I had been the very first time. This time, I did not feel threatening. Merely as if it were there to observe. In surprise, I stared back at him for maybe 30 seconds before throwing a pillow at him. To my shock, he ended up disappearing. <laughs> the only time that I had seen him with the white red eyes was the first time I had seen him as a child, which is also the only time I was incredibly scared. I was around 25 when I told my mom about my experience. She was really creeped out because she said that she, her younger sister, and her mother had all seen the same man. We were having a family weekend with my aunts and female cousins, and my mother brought it up. My aunt and mom were in, went into great detail about how they had seen the hat man when they were children, maybe 8 to 10 years old. He would be at the foot of their bed and stared at them. They also said that when they told their father about it, he immediately believed them and was scared. Apparently, he and my grandmother had seen him as well. When they told my great-grandfather about it, he believed them and said to ignore it. I'm 29 years old and haven't seen him for many years, thank goodness. But recently I found out that my 15-year-old niece has seen him a few times when she was younger. He would be sitting on the couch watching her, but she said no one else could see him. My family has always had weird paranormal experiences. It's just interesting that only the women on my mother's side of the family have seen this man. The end. Hmm. <laughs> sitting on the couch. Yeah. Yo, I saw a video like that. It, it, that scene is, is creepy. Yeah, but uh, but uh, if if it's watching her on the couch, como tu crees que está? Like, I love the ella, like like this, looking at her. I don't know. Stare or staring saw, at her. It don't matter how it's sitting. You see someone sitting <laughs> that's not supposed to be sitting next to your daughter, your son, your <laughs> whatever family, any kid. It's crazy. Something staring. Excuse me. Someone sitting next to your child. It's scary as is. Yeah, man. You know. Tell each other but like I said, open. I saw a video where someone pans the camera because it, it's they give the videos. It, well, OK, I'm going to give a shout out to the guy is um, Nuke's top five. I okay. love watching his videos. He has a lot of um, paranormal videos. Yeah, I've seen a few. And they, you know, a lot of them you can see that they're most, I see them as fake. But there's a few that <laughs> leave you with that. You know what if? Yeah. And yeah. There's yeah. one that I saw. They pan, and there's some 
silhouette sitting on the on the sofa, the couch, you know, and the guy doesn't see it until he sees the video. So yeah, it's creepy as is. Yo, I saw one one of those uh new stop five and um I know that in one of the videos I found this so weird. Um it's uh this girl, she's in her house and she has dogs and then the dogs start barking and they both start barking at the same time and then they go into the kitchen and they come back out and then she says that I mean it's happened I guess a few times so she ended up putting cameras in her house and she's sitting there about. watching TV and all of a sudden you see her hair go yeah, lift up so she gets freaked out and then uh, dogs start barking again she looks out and then the security camera on the outside catches an image of like something hiding in the woods and like moving. Mm-hmm. I got to see if I, I find if it. I find that specific video, I got to put it up so the viewers can see it. But yeah, yeah. we got to give a shout out to Luke's top five. I, I got to watch that. Really? Yeah, oh, man, you look at it on YouTube. He has, I mean, that's all I guess that's all he posts is like yeah, that's paranormal what he videos. He posts, people send it to him and he'll just post it up or yeah. he looks it up. And and it's, I, I love watching it. Like I said, I love anything paranormal and it's just enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, it's interesting. There was, a, there was one about this guy. That one looks kind of fake. The only thing that, was a little creepy. I guess it was like in England and they're they're having they have tons of like paranormal activity going on in the house. So they're like used to it at this point. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I mean, like, saying he, he gets slapped in the face. Yeah, uh, that, that was I corny. That, that was, when yeah, they turn the camera to I the room, fake. when I they turn the camera to the room, there's like a slither of the door open. And you see a shadow cross from one side to another. And then they open the door. There's nobody there. But look, I'm gonna go down to the basement later on, and I'm gonna take a picture. There's there's a wall in the bit right where I live at. There's some washing machines downstairs in the basement, right? Everybody washes their their clothes down there. Yes. But there's a certain I can I can't say it's a doorway, but it's small like a window. You know, a wide window way, I can say. And it's super dark. You look at it and you get creeped out. Yeah. There's a video that Nuke and Nuke's top five where you see there's a similar doorway and yet you see a shadow just like fly right in. That's I'm going like to take the picture. I'm going to send it to you. The Watcher. Have you guys seen that on Netflix? There's a movie called Watchers. Well, no, there's a series. It's actually a true story. Like, till this day, 2022, it hasn't been solved. Is this about the some people in the house and somebody was leaving the mail? Yeah, the mail yes. and stuff. I, I, I heard that on YouTube way before Netflix got yes. uh, the series. So that's a but, true story. That's, I think, is in Connecticut, I think it is. Never seen and, it, never heard and of it. That's it's still to this day it hasn't been resolved. They don't know that's who it crazy. is. That's crazy. But in one of the scenes, uh, they start talking about how back in the days, um, I guess for like prohibition times, when they had to like smuggle illegal alcohol and all that shit. Yeah. A lot of these houses have like passages yeah, where you and they've Tunnels been covered shit. up. But if you like find them, that shit will lead somewhere. Sometimes, well, in the show, it, it talks about that it would lead to other houses in the neighborhood, which is why they suspected people were coming into their house. Creepy. Yeah. So freaking creepy, yo. So, yeah. The hat man. The hat man. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a feeling of somebody going into your house while you're sleeping. Yeah. It don't even have to be paranormal. It, you know, you can exactly it real. Just, know, somebody, some weirdo, just somebody staring at you. Yeah. Some weirdo, you know, pops up into your house out of the blue. 
You don't know what the hell he wants. It could be some bum just wanting money. And you still get, excuse yeah. me, you still get. Ustedes, ha, ustedes han puesto a escuchar los 911 videos of home invasion. Like, there's somebody in the house. Oh, so there's somebody in the house. That, you can Google that and you can YouTube it. Y te sale los videos. Like, people like scared and they're like, there's somebody in the house. Like, that, that's okay, You crazy. know what? That also can be uh, just a hoax. You know, people just coming up with it. Uh, well, some of them aren't. But, no, not, I'm not saying well, all of them. I'm not saying all of them, but nowadays, you know, people can make up shit with all the technology. Everything true. possible. True. I don't know, man. Still oh, creepy, oh, 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 oh. Promo. Promo. Nah, it's a dude, man. Like, I want some stickers now. <laughs> <laughs> Dip it in peanut butter. <laughs> Dip it in peanut butter. The hat man. That was so, the hat man. That was a story of the hat man. That was um we talked about what is it, the rolling calf? Rolling calf. So again, I remind you who are listening to us or watching us. We want to hear your stories. Drop us a comment, write us an email, tell us mm-hmm. your story. The Grim Fix Podcast at gmail.com. You can write to us also on Facebook, the Grim Fix Podcast, or on Instagram, the Grim Fix Podcast. But we do want to hear from you guys. Yeah. I think uh, hearing, from, hearing from the listeners is awesome. So I you think know? we can leave this episode here. I guess we went fully on the supernatural. I have a, uh, as on top is a week, save it for another week. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, look, look. I was reading, I found this, I bumped into this. We were going to talk about, remember, we were going to talk about um funny deaths, like weird ways to die. Yeah. We were going to talk about that. And I bumped into this story. It's something short. And the title says, Death by Beard. Okay. It's, it's weird. It says, um, Hans Steininger from Austria was famous for two things. Having the world's longest beard four feet and seven inches long. Damn. And number two, for dying due to his beard. <laughs> in 1567, <laughs> there was a fire in Hans town and from his haste, he forgot to roll up his beard by accidentally stepping on his beard. He lost his balance, stumbled, died after falling and breaking his neck. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Who would have thought? You should have died in the fire. I'm trying to picture and it. Yeah, like... he died. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, they got a couple of you. You, 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 I just had, I just wanted to share that simple story because I found it funny. Hilarious. Know? I mean, not that we're happy that he died, right? No, no, no of course not, though. You know, <laughs> my condolences to his family. The beard. His bearded family. His beard. That's insane, hey. though. You're, you're dying because of your beard. Like... You step on a couple, and yet you just break you your break neck. You break your neck. You break your neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Busta Rhymes song, right? <laughs> um, Yo, you gotta put that clip in. <laughs> oh God! All right. So this has been the Grim Fix Podcast. Till next week, please stay safe. Peace. Peace. What's up, Snickers?